Spring break is over and Alabama is back out on the practice field. How Nick Saban assessed the first practice on Monday after the break. Plus, a chat with Jenny Mines, head coach of Alabama's sixth ranked women's tennis team. How did she turn the tide into a powerhouse? We'll find out. That and more right now on the one, the only Tider Insider Television. Go inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Carrie Harris. And what a weekend for Alabama softball and baseball clubs. Both broke out brooms. Softball took care of LSU, while baseball handled ninth-ranked Ole Miss. Sweeps for both. That's got them both climbing up in the polls. We'll tell you how high they climbed up a little bit later on in the program. Good evening, everybody, and welcome in to Tider Insider TV. Alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com, I'm Gary Harris. Our program presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock. Once again tonight, ice cold Pepsi next. All that great Pepsi taste, two-thirds less sugar, only 60 calories per 12-ounce can. And it's really cold, a little bit icy, right? That's it what you is, like it, yeah. isn't it? You know what? Alabama made it through spring break off the field with no incidents. That's always a good thing. Not every school can say that. Now it's back to work. Rodney the Tide back out on the practice field on Monday. Four practices before the spring break, having to break it up a little bit. Uh, your thoughts on what you saw from the Crimson Tide on the first day back? Uh, I mean, it's really hard to tell because we have such limited, you know, opportunity in terms of watching them, Gary. But, you know, Coach Saban certainly addressed the media last night. And, you know, as you would expect, any time you have a split spring, Coach Saban pointed this out, it's very difficult on the players the first practice or two back. You've been gone for eight days, whatever it is. And so they've got a little kind of took a step back, but certainly – you know, this week I'm sure they'll catch up. Absolutely, Rodney. Indeed, Coach uh, did talk about that offseason so far. A plus. First four practices of spring practice, A plus. But as you said, and Coach is about to talk about it, when you give them a week off, sometimes they're going to come back with a little rust. Always a difficult circumstance for players when you have to split spring practice. Uh, I thought we really had a good off season and a really good for first four practices and made a lot of progress and you know probably took a little bit of a step back today which is expected when you have this much time off uh, especially when we don't have a lot of choices in terms of being able to integrate the players back into you know football whether it's go in shorts and you know then maybe shells then pads because we have to continue to progress and coach also uh, saying yesterday that defensive lineman Darren Lake, the big junior out of Sumter Central High School, will miss the rest of the spring after surgery on his pictorial muscle, so he'll miss some reps. Good news is he'll be back uh, and ready to go in the summer and should be 100% by fall camp. Well, Alabama is back out on the field tomorrow, Rod. The first scrimmage is set for Saturday. And another issue that came up at the press conference yesterday is the issue of college football players trying to unionize. Northwestern has gotten the go-ahead just first, Rodney, before we hear from Coach on this, just, just your thoughts on, on what this all could mean. Well, I, I don't know what it all could mean, Gary, but I'll certainly give you a quick opinion. I don't think the players should be paid. In my opinion, I think the value they get from all the opportunities they get when they're here or when they're at any school, I think you've got a scholarship. You know how much, the, whatever the value of that is at any particular school and all the other training and all the other benefits that they get through the programs that are offered by those schools. I think that's, you know, that's why they're here. That's part of it. They're amateurs. And, of course, Rodney, you're thinking of or, or talking about an entire set of issues that could come up in addition to just whether or not they get compensated, insurance, taxes, just all kinds of things that, uh, you know, could – be a factor. We'll see what happens with that. Certainly it's going to be tied up in court for a while. Here's Coach Saban and his thoughts on uh, the whole idea of players unionizing. I think that, you know, having a voice uh, in what happens uh, I think is something that the players probably ought to have. I'm really not opposed to that at all. We do reinvest in their future and their chances of being successful, uh, and we do care. And it's not just about football. So there's a lot of value uh, that players get from the experience that they have as college student athletes that really benefit their chances of being successful. I know the fact that I played football and got a scholarship, but all the things that I've benefited from have helped me be, be, be very, very successful. And I can't really tell you what the value of that is. 
but I think it's pretty significant. Ronnie, that's a great point. Even if you're pro-union or pro-paying players, please stop minimizing what a full athletic scholarship is worth. It's it's worth a lot. Well, and it and it's and it leads to great opportunities after college too. It it really does, Gary. And I think those are the kind of things that we're not really, you know, talking about when when they're discussing some of this is you know just how valuable it is and and how you're setting yourself up for the future. You know, you're getting opportunities that maybe the average kid doesn't get. Let's be honest. I mean, you know, you're getting that education for free, and, you know, some people have to pay for their education, and they go for years having to pay for that after they finish school. Well, Northwestern's going to appeal that decision, and it's a long way before we could actually see a union, but certainly a step in that direction. Well, Alabama gymnastics will make their way to the Pacific Northwest for a weekend of NCAA regionals coming up. Sarah Patterson's group is the number one seed in the Seattle region. A top two finish there will ensure that the Tide will advance to the NCAA championships, which will be held in Birmingham. The coach knows the girls are excited about making a second trip to Seattle, Washington in the last four years. I think they have positive memories about it. So, you know, it really didn't matter. We could go just about any place to go to the regional championship. I didn't care if they sent us to the moon. I, I would have been happy. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's just nice to see them so excited about it. Nebraska, Boise State, Washington, Denver, and BYU will join the Tide in the regional. Nebraska defeated Alabama earlier this season. Well, more Tider Insider TV is coming up, including talk about one of the hottest baseball teams in the country. But next, we'll be joined on the set by Alabama women's tennis coach Jenny Mines. She'll tell us what's coming up for one of the top teams in the SEC, and does this team have national championship potential? And we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. There's the information on the screen on how you can interact with Tider Insider TV. So go ahead, give us a call, email us, or message us on Twitter. We'll be right back with the show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. The award-winning Tider Insider TV will return right after this. A lot of Alabama teams are ranked in the polls, and not many of them are higher than tennis right now. On the women's side, Alabama sixth in the country. They're 8-1 and one in the SEC, 16-3 and three overall, tied for first in the SEC. And tonight we have the head coach of the Alabama women's team, Jenny Mines, with us. Coach, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Gary. Nice to be here. And glad to have you. Hey, I want to start out by just talking about the, the evolution of this program. It's been a slow, steady climb. And you look at it, and this is your 17th season, but particularly over the last four or five years since the facility and everything, and, and now this year, it's kind of culminated with the first ever win over Florida. As I said, number six in the country, only one conference loss. Really a national title contender that you, you put together here. Well, let's hope so. We're, we're working toward that, trying to keep up with all the other sports, really. Um, congratulations to all of them. Everybody's having a good season. But, um, you know, it's been very rewarding. It's been a long, steep climb. Uh, we, we've come a long way. Um, I don't think anybody remembers that I had to ask sorority uh, girls to come out and play, and I went to PE classes wow. when I first got here and I did not know 17 that. years ago, and we were dead last in the SEC. So it's been very fun and rewarding to see the climb. But um, this is a team that can win an SEC championship. This is a team that can contend for a national championship. Uh, we've got the leadership, we've got the talent, we've got the depth, so uh, we just got to keep taking it one match at a time, getting a little bit stronger with each each match. Well, you know, um, recently you beat Florida for the first time. That that was here in right. Tuscaloosa, and I know you had some recruits here, and you can't talk specifically about recruits, but kind of talk about how a win like that, what it does for your program in terms of recruiting. Well, I mean, it's huge. It's a, it's a pivotal match. Um, the SEC obviously is known for its um, for tennis, men's and women's tennis both. It's very strong. It's the premier conference in women's tennis, and um, you know we're recruiting from the southeast. We recruit a lot in Florida, and you know any time that um, we're, we're getting big wins over perennial, you know top two, top three teams, whether it's SEC or nationally, what, which is all in this one and the same, um, it, it's great for recruiting. And uh, we've had great fans, great crowds. Of course, our facilities are, are second to none thanks to Coach Moore. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we're just putting all the pieces together, but it, it's helped us immensely with recruiting. I, I want to talk more about the facilities. It wasn't that long ago that the outdoor courts were over by the, right. the um, 
aquatic center and right. back behind the practice football fields and your couple indoor courts were inside the indoor <laughs> football right, facility. Yeah. Now the Roberta Bumgarter Tennis Complex, your indoor facility as good as anybody's, your outdoor courts are splendid. What is the impact that's had on building this program to the point where it's at now? Well, it's helped take us to the next level and I think Coach Moore saw that vision and he knew that and he promised us that he would take good care of us and get us the new indoor tennis facility and it's the nicest in the country. I mean, it's you know, the, the seating capacity, the elevated seating, it's an electric environment in there. I mean, it just catches fire and people get so engaged. But um, to have it right next to a 12-court stadium, uh, we, we could host anything from NCAA championships onward. Right. But it's, it's a great complex. You close out the regular season this weekend. Uh, that's here in town, right? Correct. Uh, number 7, Texas A&M on Friday, Missouri on Sunday. I want to ask you about... The, the potential to win that SEC championship, how huge would that be for Alabama women's tennis to win, the, to win the conference title? It would be big because, you know, you look at rankings. Rankings came out today. We, we moved up to number five today. Number five. I You've shorted got, you yeah, one. Yeah, well, no, it changes weekly. You never know, and you can't bank on those too much. But, you know, you're looking at Florida, Georgia. Georgia's number two right now. Um, uh, Vanderbilt is six, which they – they just beat us, but it's funny how the rankings work. But you've got about five teams in the top ten in the SEC. So to, to win an SEC championship, you know, in effect would put us in contention, I think, for a national championship. But, you know, we've got a long way to go. We've got a lot of work to do, but we're just taking it mat one match at a time. But we've got the belief. We've got the vision, and, and we can do it. We're, we're ready for it. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Had an 11-match winning streak until the Vanderbilt uh, match, yeah. and it's been a great year. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. Thanks for having me on Roll Tide. Good luck and continued success. Well, Thank next you. on TITV, we'll tell you just how high the Crimson Tide baseball team climbed in the latest national polls after a sweep of ninth-ranked Ole Miss. Plus, we're welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You can see the information there on the screen on how you can interact with Tider and Cider TV. So go ahead and do so right now. Get in touch with us because we'll be right back and we'll hear from you when Tider and Cider TV continues right after this. You know, Mitch Gaspard was not shy preseason about telling fans and boosters that he thought he was going to have a heck of a ball club this year. And he does. Alabama swept ninth-ranked Ole Miss over the weekend at the Joe. The Tide has moved up to number 15 in the latest poll, and uh, they're getting ready for a big series at Texas A&M, but this team proving it can play with anybody. All right, Rodney, you ready to uh, take some phone sure. calls? Let's get right to it. Let's uh, go to Cordova and talk to John Mack. Hey, John Mack, welcome in. Yeah, hey, my question today is, is um, I was wondering, I know Sims is going to start, but who's going to be the under two starting quarterbacks for the 8A game? Well, first of all, John, I don't really think that's, you know, you're going to have a crimson team, a white team, but I'm sure both, a lot of times what happens in these 8A games, you have quarterbacks playing for both teams. I'm, you know, it's really early, to, too early to say, and I don't think it's really that significant, to be honest with you, but I think Blake Sims certainly will get a, you know, a lot of reps, Gary, and, and I think you want to try to get as many reps to the rest of the guys. You know, obviously you have Alec Morris, you have Parker McLeod, you have Cooper Bateman, you have David Cornwell. I don't know to what extent he'll be available to participate because, you know, he is still coming off that knee surgery. But, uh, you know, again, you know, you're just going to try to get as many guys in that quarterback group as many reps as possible. All right, thanks, uh, John Mack, for the phone call. Let's swing it over to Silicaga and talk to Charles. Hey, Charles, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey, buddy. Yeah, I want to know, uh, if Blake Sims don't win the starting QB job, you think he'll try for another position? Uh, Charles, I don't know. I mean, he is, this is his last year of eligibility. I, you know, I think they, uh, they feel like he's a quarterback at this point. And, uh, you know, I, I know what you're getting at. He is a good athlete. But, uh, I, you know, we'll have to wait and see. That's all I can tell you. And, and, Ronnie, I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I just think we're just going to have to wait and see how this entire quarterback race develops. Well, you remember Sims and all the yeah, others. You remember his redshirt freshman year. He played running back. Right. He had a long run against Ole Miss uh, over there in Oxford. But, you know, I, I really don't think so. I wouldn't think if, that he would move to another position because, I mean, you always need quarterbacks, and he's got a lot of experience. I still think he'll probably have a role of some sort, even if he doesn't. Uh, isn't the starter, doesn't win that job, I think he'll probably have a role. Yeah, and uh, you know, even if he doesn't win it, as you alluded to, Rodney, he could easily be the number two, and the number two is always just one play away from being the number one based on injuries. Let's take an email, and uh, this comes to us from Jacob in Tuscaloosa. With all three running backs, will all three running backs get good touches this year, or will Kenyon Drake 
be left behind. Rodney, I'll let you handle that. I just don't think there's any way you can answer that right now. I mean, certainly you look at T.J. Yeldon and, and Kenyon Drake has, has a lot of experience. Derrick Henry had the great bowl game. We know what kind of talent he has and, you know, just how good can he be. And, you know, I know that Kenyon Drake brings a lot of different things to the table with that great acceleration and, and those types of things. But you're going to have to earn your carries because there's a lot of competition. Let's not forget you have all T. Penny, a guy that was a, a freshman last year that played some, that has a lot of promise. Tyron Jones is a guy that redshirted that was highly recruited. So, you know, there's a lot of guys competing for, for those touches, and we know that uh, Justin Fowler's back, though he is in the fullback role and some H back. Uh, but, but, you know, hey, it's, it's, you're going to have to earn it, and you're going to have to do the things that you're supposed to do to, to keep your opportunities coming. All right, good enough. More to come on TITV. Baseball isn't the only team climbing in the national polls. We've been talking about a, a lot about polls today. A lot of teams are ranked. How high will Alabama softball go? How high are they right now? We'll tell you next on the program. Plus, more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. So go ahead, get through. Phone lines are open right now, 205-348-9882. There's the email address and the Twitter address. So uh, get in touch with us because we definitely want to hear from you. Tider Insider TV will return right after this. We're starting to sound like a broken record with all these Alabama teams lighting people up. What about softball this past weekend? They swept LSU, upping their SEC record to 11-1. and They're now up to number four in both the national polls, which is a season high, and they sit alone at number one in the RPI. All right, Rodney, real quickly before we go back to the phones, a breaking uh, basketball note, too, from men's basketball. Their banquet is being held tonight. Also, we would heard uh, some speculation about this. Officially announced Carl Engstrom, um, the Sweden native, will not be back at Alabama for his fifth year of eligibility. He would have been a redshirt senior. He's going to go to Europe and try to play professional basketball. So Carl Engstrom, the 7-1 center from Sweden, not returning to the Tide. All right, let's take a phone call. This is Kiara in uh, Silicaga. Kiara, how are you? Good. Good. What do you got for us tonight? Do you think um, Alabama going to win this year? Well, yeah, they're going to win a lot of games. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, how many exactly? Uh, I'm not ready to make that prediction yet. But, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to win a, a lot more than they lose. I'm, I'm confident in telling you that. <laughs> well, I mean, you certainly hope so, huh? No, I mean, I, I think when you look if at they Alabama. we got a scoop, Yeah, right? we, got, we got a major scoop. But, uh I think when you look at it, Kier, I think Alabama's going to do just fine. They'll certainly be one of the teams competing to win the West and, you know, have an opportunity to go to Atlanta and could be one of the top teams in the country once again. Have some questions, maybe a few more questions than they've had in recent years, but certainly have a lot of talent. All right, thank you for the phone call. Let's take an email question. This comes to us uh, from Emily and Hoover. Why did Luke Del Rio transfer? Good question. Uh, as a walk-on at Alabama, really made an impressive move as a, as a scout team quarterback. Was Going to figure into the race for the starting quarterback position this year. Of course, his dad's the uh, defensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos. He transfers to Oregon State. Rodney, your thoughts on why he made the move? Well, I mean, I, he never really said specifically other than he felt it was in his best interest at that time to, to, to go to uh, Oregon State. and Maybe they have a better opportunity for him there. I don't know, but he felt so. And, uh, you know, you have Jacob Coker coming in. It's going to start the next two has a chance to start the next two years, I should say. And, you know, a lot of people think that, that, that Coker was one of the top quarterbacks in the country coming out of high school and certainly competed really strongly with uh, Jameis Winston there at FSU. You know, I really don't know how much of an impact that had or, or if there were any other factors, but, you know, he's at Oregon State. All right, Rod, we've got a Twitter question now on our Twitter feed. And uh, this one is about the offensive line. Who will be the, the, the leader potentially on this offensive line? Austin Shepard's a guy that kind of jumps out at me. He does. Uh, I think Austin Shepard really does. And Coach Saban talked about him very highly last, uh, last night after practice about, you know, the things he's done in terms of leadership. And, you know, I think Ryan Kelly, I mean, he's a junior. Uh, he's a redshirt junior, so he's been around here a while. And I think when you look at him and the experience he has, I think, Gary, he's another guy that you could look at as a leader. And, you know, Ari kwanjo has been around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, certainly he's going to have an opportunity to, to you know, provide some leadership there up front. All right. Thanks for all the phone calls, the emails, and also the tweet. Good to hear from you. Good to interact with you. We'll wrap up the show next by taking a look at the week ahead in Crimson Tide Athletics. Plus, it's really good news for former Crimson Tide quarterback. He throws the rock and he designs them too. That's coming up 
on Tider Insider TV. Stay with us. A look at the SEC matchups coming up for Alabama teams in baseball. The Tide will travel to College Station, always tough out there taking on Texas A&M. Softball will welcome in Arkansas this weekend to Sewell Thomas Stadium. Alabama baseball playing a midweek game tonight against Louisiana Monroe. Softball tomorrow night at home against South Alabama. Saturday is the NCAA Regional for gymnastics. You also see men's and women's tennis there on the screen as well. And before we go, how about this? A.J. McCarron popped the question to his longtime girlfriend, model Catherine Webb. And as you see by the pictures, she said yes. If that's not impressive enough, how about this? A.J. designed the ring. But you know, Rodney, that makes sense when you think about all the experience that he has had with rings, as in the national championship and SEC championship. He won a lot of them. He knows a lot about it. He does. And that's a beautiful ring right there. Congratulations to the couple for, uh, you know, making it official that they're going to be married, and we wish them well. All right, Rod, this is just about time to wrap it up. It is dinner time for us, and tonight the crew from TITV heading over to Buddy's Rib and Steak in Northport and a dine with our good friend Philip Guy. So stop by and see us about 7.15 if you want. As always, our shirts come from the locker room located on the University Strip. It's the home of the original elephant wear. It's a Tuscaloosa tradition. The locker room has been in business since 1964. Stop in and say hello to them. They will hook you up, or you can shop online in the province of your home and order right there off your computer. So for Rodney and our entire WVUA-TV crew, I'm Gary Harris. Remind you, you can catch the show anytime on our website. Have a good evening, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week on TITV.